Avenge yourself! This season on Highway Through Hell. Okay. It's wicked. That's a full of blizzard order. Whoa! What nice highway is at its worst? It's scary. <laughs> On the way. It's like a reoccurring nightmare. Light the fire and kick the tire. We have a passenger trapped inside the truck. Dangerous game, man. Dangerous game. It was a severe heart attack. I think it's pretty bad. Adam! I'm done standing around. There's Sasquatches in here. That's what we gotta worry about. They don't call it the smasher for nothing. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, God. Oh, look at that. Any trucks that hope that are thinking of taking the Okinawa, change your mind. Oh, is it all snowing up there? Heavy snow. Oh, man. Welcome to the first day of winter, eh? It's not even November, and drivers on BC's Coquihalla Highway are getting an early taste of winter. The clouds are out there, but can't keep up. It's coming down real bad. The snowstorm caught many by surprise. We get these unexpected snow events, and it paralyzes everything. Days before Halloween, no tow trucks are on duty near the summit. It's like the wild, wild west up here. But help is on the way. Police sent us up because, you know, they, there's been some spin outs and the, and the hill could be blocked. Jamie Davis heads to the top of the mountain in a truck he's never tested this far up the coke before, the Python. The Python is really not made for pulling trucks up the hill. But it's low and slow and it does the job. Today, riding with Jamie. Well, this is exciting. Because I haven't been up here. It's his wife and business partner, Sherry. Sherry's my son. I take care of the business side. Today, Sherry doesn't want to miss out on the action. Well, Sherry's all excited to see the first snowfall of winter. It's kind of a treat. Passenger trapped inside the truck. Dangerous See, it's not what heavy up here now. Yeah. It's also how it's pretty majestic. It's like when you just start going up. It's really not a good place to be. Jamie's target is just north of the snowshare. section of the highway. A 70-foot-long fuel B-train tanker blocks a lane. But the tanker may be too much for Jamie's 22-ton record. This is a lot more than what Python can handle. We could be outmatched. on the Coquihalla. Look at that, man. A fuel tanker is stuck on one of the steepest sections of the highway. Police end us up. I'm not 100% confident that I can do this job with this truck. But Jamie He's empty. has a chance. Well, then I can give him a hand then. That's the pretty cool. Is really Good not job. Made for pulling trucks he up lines there. up the python. And gets to work. You're empty, eh? I wouldn't have touched this with it loaded. It's still gonna be a bit of a pull. First storm of the year, eh? Oh. <laughs> Old crusty. I don't like Sherry's my <laughs> sounding board. Even empty, the 35,000 pound tanker may be too side. much. Well, it wouldn't be my first choice to use the Python to, you know, pull trucks up the hill. 
but Jamie will try to turn the odds in his favor. Try to get him away from the guardrail first. By working the angles. Trying to just hook onto him and drag him up the hill is not going to work out. We've got to winch this truck away from the barrier. But when it's just start going up, it's really not a good place. Take all the brakes off and I'll work with you at the same time. The tanker is away from the barrier. I'm gonna stay off to my left, and then I'll just put mine in low gear and go with you up the top. But now, oh, oh, the hard. real test. He's chained up. He just needs that little bit of extra help. This is it. done and it's a lesson that we've learned how to do a lot well, with a little my first choice to use the python to you know pull trucks up the hill this winter jamie is counting on his fleet of classic trucks more than ever we're still first. continuing with old iron old trucks part of a collection of homes wreckers i'm going to, him to him and him and restore and rebuild wreckers nearly half a century old, old like mighty mo mighty mo is a 40 ton mechanical wrecker and the truck he put into battle last winter, the same day he bought it. Pretty cool truck, eh? The General. It's my heavy hitter. And over the summer, even more vintage iron rolled into his yard. I think I'm at the point where I got enough projects to last me the rest of my days. needs a little bit of dependable, bulletproof. Been around for a long time being recovered. No more bringing home any projects until we finish a few. I think I'm quite happy to be ready right for the ground. As night falls. A second snowstorm hits the coat, and word of a crash between Hope and Merrick. We know who's doing the recovery on this unit. Yeah, it's coming down pretty good. Yeah, it's coming to the public scene. Reliable towings, James Luke heads to the call in his 30 ton wrecker, Black Sheep. We've got a highway tractor that has jack knife and is in the ditch. A little bit of finesse and skill. A little pipe fire just makes her happen. It's a good old truck. See you later, eh? Time to put on the snow gear. Every job we go to is a learning experience. James arrives to find a jackknife center, trapped between the north and southbound lanes. This is a problem. This wreck here has packed itself in there pretty good. How to do a lot with a little. The tractor trailer lost control. Landing in the center median, surrounded by deep snow. Mighty Mo is a 40-ton mechanical wrecker. Like right now, 
it's okay, yep. it won't shut down. The driver is unharmed and still on scene. The driver is very lucky. I was coming around this bend, and my tires didn't catch enough traction. The trailer is loaded with 100,000 pounds of pulp. It's on an incline. We have trees. I know it's going to be a challenge. James will need more muscle. Bulletproof. Reliable's 50 ton and operator Kyle Bryant join the battle. Hey, Kyle. This guy's really in there. It's another challenge for someone still getting used to heavy wreckers. That's what it is. Last winter, Kyle got his first chance to run a heavy on one of Reliable's toughest jobs. I'm more confident, but I've got a lot to learn. Tonight's recovery is getting more difficult by the minute. Pretty well fully loaded. The leg is set. It freezes. It's not easy trying to free something that's been sitting here for hours and hours. Time to put on the snow gear. Look at this. Every job we go to is learning. Here's your Christmas tree, bud. Yeah. We'll see if it comes out. You can see the trucks up against the tree there, so you can't really just pull the front of the truck around and pull the truck and trailer out of the ditch. I'll pull the truck this as you problem. pull the trailer. But I gotta watch this right here. Pull on. just packed itself in there pretty good. The truck's jackknifed right now, so when we pull on the trailer backwards, we want it to straighten out. Reliable towing is trying to rescue a heavy load. James! Trapped in the middle of the highway. Oh! Whoa! Are you kidding me? Son of a bitch. Hey, Kyle. Your chain slip off? Yeah. The winch line and the hook and everything came whipping back at us. I don't know what to think right now. Aha! Uh -huh. But for James and Kyle, there's a silver lining. The chain didn't break. Yeah. What if you just wrapped it around the rim or confident the chain under there? Here. I think that should hold. Being that we're trying to keep at least one lane open, it's not the ideal angle to be working off the truck. It's not easy trying to put some pressure on that. Even with two powerful wreckers, the angle of the pole is extreme. I know this isn't going to be easy. We'll see if it comes out. Pole, Kyle! You can see the truck's up against the tree there, so you can't really just pull the front of the truck. Come on! Keep pulling! It's moving! Oh, yeah. so when we pull on the Even the Rex driver has high hopes. Keep going! Perfect! One more! The jackknife semi is finally straight. Do you want to unhook, spin around? Yeah. But the 100,000 pound pulp truck still needs to come out of the ditch. Now we just gotta worry about truck slide in. The trailer is in the hole too, because it's loaded. 
My worry is we have to deal with the edge of the road and the angle of the ditch. There's still a high chance of the truck and trailer wanting to roll over it. If by any chance this doesn't work, I'm going to be explaining to my boss why this truck is running on its side. Twenty miles southwest in the Fraser Valley. What's going on uh, east of 260? It's gonna get ugly. The Trans Canada Highway is squeezed down to one lane. We're gonna go to Highway One eastbound, just east of 264, for an end dump sitting in the ditch. Operator Chris Mervin is en route. I got my 50 ton rotator. In aggressive towing's newest weapon. Mm -hmm. Last winter. That is something. I know this isn't going to be easy. Merv was just getting used to his new toy. There it is. And helped out on one of the toughest jobs of the year. I love my It's like showing up with the sword. It's fairly high tech, it's super sensitive. And I can control everything to do with the boom off two joysticks. Touchdown! Nice. What happened with that truck? Tonight, you Ooh, buddy, it's gonna be a wiggle fest. Is perfect for the rotator. Let's see what we got. Wow, that is not happy. The driver is fine, but the gravel truck well, is anything but. It's traveled in probably about 20, 30 yards down the ditch, but still sitting on all its tires fully loaded. And we've been having rain for the last week nonstop, so it's definitely wet and mucky in there. They probably need some light there because you're light on. Merv's boss, Jason Davis. And a second heavy wrecker arrive on scene. This thing holds 26 tons of material, plus with its own weight is about 18,000 for the trailer, probably about 16,000 for the tractor. That's loaded enough that it's going to be a little bit of a truck. To keep the lane closure to a minimum, aggressive towing has been given only one hour. And it's funny, boys. Whenever they put a time limit on something, there's always pressure that comes along with it because there's a lot of unforeseen things. The fastest way to recover the load is to use the rotator's raw lifting power. Berg will use the rotator to pick up the back end while the 50-ton wrecker in front pulls the tractor forward to try and land the truck back onto the road. Just hook the frame is right by that trunnion. Yeah, on the inside of it. Yeah, and then come this way, the whole side. There it is. But after a closer look at the load, Jason uncovers a new problem. When you roll up Silt. on the rotator, it's like Silt? showing up with yeah. cool oh. sword. The gravel truck it's is full of sensitive. wet silt. I can control it changes what we're dealing with. Off two joysticks. Fine silt. It's heavy as it used to be. It's heavy. That's going to weigh a lot. Okay. Let's see what it does here pretty quick. OK, boys, are pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sir. The rotator begins to lift. My truck is rated for 43,000 pounds over the side. Anything more than that, we risk the truck tipping over. The wet silt He's heavy. has thrown He's all calculations out the, the window. Ditch, still sitting on all his tires the tricky really part about lifting this truck without we knowing the exact weight is how far out our boom extends in order to pick this weight. Wet and You're kind of doing a little bit of guesswork there. there. Well, no, we're getting worse. All right. Yeah, it's maybe. 
And anytime you hit even close to 100%, you gotta be concerned. There is a lot of weight in that That's sketchy. Must have been a little rough ride. On the Coke. Okay, I'm gonna grab the front, we're gonna pull it out. The jackknife oh, semi has been straightened. Because this is a little bit steeper than what I like. But James and Kyle still face a heavy task. Now comes the fun part. Winching the 100,000 pound pulp truck out of a deep ditch. We'll try pulling it, we'll have to just watch the trailer. There's still a high chance of the truck and trailer wanting to roll over as I am pulling it out of the ditch. Ready? Yeah. James will pull from the front. Hey, Kyle, see if he can slowly move forward. And the driver is back behind the wheel to help. Okay, watch out. Is it moving? Yeah. But as the wreck climbs the bank, he's got to watch that trailer. The angle is pushing the limit. The trailer does start to lean quite a bit, being that it is so heavy. Watch that trailer. See what it does here. Hold it slow, easy, easy. Hold it. I just don't like to lean on that trailer. The last thing you want is to get this far and then. Maybe you should unhook and just stuff. grab the Anything more than corner that, we'll of the trailer. Because all you'll have to do is just stabilize it, right? Yeah, so you stop <laughs> sliding backwards. <sighs> the part Kyle lands a line to the front of the trailer. As I'm pulling, he's going to release and we'll slowly get up on the road. Okay, you ready? Kyle, Kyle muscles the trailer up the bank. Walmart, Walmart. But the extreme tension is taking its toll on his winch line. James! If this cable breaks, this truck and trailer are going to end up on its side. No, 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 no. Come on, get On the coke. Afraid winch line. James! Threatens to unravel reliable towing's recovery. Hold on! Stop. Getting down to the last few strands on Kyle's line. I don't have a lot of cable left on that one. This trailer is leaning so hard. This is definitely not what we need. I can't pull anything on that anymore. I, I just need line. you to keep tension. And you can't even do it. Well, you're got tension on it right now, right? No, I'm good. You're so close to having this thing on the road that you make the decision to chance it. The line's fraying, so there's no structural integrity to the line anymore. I just gotta keep letting it out, so that way James can keep pulling the truck out. Okay, ready, go! Yeah! Hold it slow, easy, easy. It's a big risk, because that cable could break at any second. But we gotta get this job done and get the highway open for it. Straight. Turn the wheel straight. Yeah, so Try and move backwards. forward slow. The driver adds some throttle. Just slowly feather it. Keep going, keep going. Okay, ready? Finally, the loaded pulp truck is on the road. There we go. <laughs> Someone upstairs was watching out for us and just let like, the cable stay all together and now we're heading out of here. I'm glad to see him out. A hard-fought victory for Team Reliable.
And one happy customer. That's drivable, which is miraculous. Thanks a lot, bud. Appreciate it. I'm going home tonight, so I'm happy about that. It feels really good actually seeing the driver really happy. I'm gonna pilot you down the same behind me. Yanking that gravel truck out of the median. In the valley. What the hell of a hard cut? A rain soaked wreck. There is a lot of weight going Is pushing aggressive towing's 50 ton rotator to the limit. Which should have weighed in around 30,000 pounds. I think we're pushing 55, 56,000 pounds on the back. The wet silt is like heavy concrete. I gotta get it close. Merv and Jason need a new plan. Tighten this line up, leave the other one down, and then just kind of, and then bring it over. Instead of lifting the entire wreck, kind of going for a drag method versus a lift. They'll try to slide it up to the road. The tractor creeps forward. Leave this one down, burn this side down. Let it come right beside your tire and just roll with it, right? Yeah, it's drivable. Merv keeps swinging the loaded dump box around toward his rotator. But the closer the wreck gets to the road, the more the rotator is in harm's way. You're going to be swinging around the side supporting this much weight. You do stand a very good chance of it smashing into your oh. Oh. On Highway 1. Gentle. Oh. A rain soaked load. That was it finding its happy place has narrowly missed aggressive towing's rotator. Yeah, if the rotator got hit by the dump truck, it would cost me money, and it would damage my perfectly yeah, pretty up, unit. The, down, and then it, and then the loaded dump truck is only part way out. Jason and Merv need to get the highway reopened. When they give you a short period of time, every second counts. You definitely got to figure out your next plan real quick. You ready, Merv? Yes, sir. Once again, Merv will take his 50-ton rotator right to the edge. You're able to push it a little bit, but you don't want to go too far. Five thousand pound truck is finally on the road. Beautiful boys. And incredibly, the truck still runs. Our guys did really well. 
organizing and changing up things. We still did it in a timely fashion, so we're very, very happy. I think all in all it went really well. Trucks out of the ditch, it's still in one piece. And it actually has yeah, to drive its own way, so... I think that's pretty good. One hour before dawn. How are they fighting a tap on I'm just heading out. Mission Towing's Dylan Greenwood has been called out to an off-road job in the hills west of Hope. Just heading up to Bridal Falls for Sirs Road to recover a pickup truck that's uh, rolled off the bank. It's the kind of job that makes Dylan's boss, Ken DePerrin, nervous. Some of these roads are very, very dangerous and very narrow. You've got to know where to go and you've got to know when to stop. So you just kind of hope and pray that they can get in and out of there without a problem. Joining Dylan is operator Steve White. I grew up in the mission area. I've been up through all the Forest Service roads. But this road gets very rough. They're pretty much one of the narrowest spots. Dylan and Steve make it to the wreck. Turn to the left. Yep. Go. And line up their tow tracks. Hey, that's good, bud. There she is. The pickup truck is 40 feet down the bank. Somebody's ended up grabbing the soft shoulder of the road and it slid off and then rolled down the embankment. That tree is the last thing all been under a bunch of twigs. He caught the only tree that was actually in the area. Even when we were improvising and changing up things, we still did it on Yesterday, unforgiving road. Dylan scouted the wreck. Get held up by this tree. And discovered it clinging to a single truck. Gotta be about a thousand feet now. And it actually tends to drive itself away, so. He's lucky. I think that's pretty good. The driver walked away. He's uh, got a bang up shoulder, and that's it. But the wreck could let go any time. As soon as we pull on it and we move it off the tree, it's sort of just free hanging. To make sure his own truck doesn't go over the edge. So this is a tree right here? OK. Dylan runs a line to a tree above the road. These wreckers are not designed all over the side. Throwing an anchor line up to a strong tree will give me that anchor that I need. Only thing worse than a truck in the ditch is the tree on top of the truck in the ditch. Once secured, Dylan climbs down to rig on to the pickup. Some of these roads are very, very. There's uh, not much stop in this thing once it starts getting momentum. You've got to know where to go. With one line holding on to Dylan's truck, the two wreckers will flip the truck onto its wheels, then slide it up to the road. As dawn breaks, now yeah, we're getting some better light. Yeah, it's going to spin. Dylan and Steve start to winch. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. You do your best to do the least amount of damage. We're hoping that Dylan can winch it forward and I can winch the truck off its side and onto his tire. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Nope. But the wreck oh, is rolling the wrong way. On a mountain road. Mission Towing's high angle recovery is upside down. Stop there, Steve. We were hoping to get it to roll back up on its tires, but as we both started winching, it actually started to roll back over onto its roof. You're going to have to re rig. 
Steve scrambles down the bank. He's, uh, Your turn. got a banged up shoulder, <laughs> that's it. Oh, yeah. With a new plan. I'm going to disconnect my winch line underneath the side of the box and reconnect the winch line to the trailer hitch. Oh, up yeah, there? right there? Yeah, go right in there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that'll give us the best transition. Okay. We're just going to bring it back the same way it rolled down in there. Still dangling above the deep ravine. Give me that you a pull? That I need. Dylan and Steve try oh, again. The truck in the ditch, the tree on top of the truck in the ditch. Get high on it. Keep pulling yours, Steve. There's no bunch of stock in this thing once it starts getting momentum. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, well. Finally, the truck's on its wheels. I'll let you pull it forward. And plowing its way up the bank. Now we're getting some better light. Yeah, we'll just finish her off here, bring a little bit extra just to be safe. Yeah, go ahead, Steve. You do your best to it's do good the to get it back onto the road. <laughs> We're hoping that Dylan for us to be able to get that truck up and out off its side was its pretty tire. amazing. Keep going, keep going. Good. I always worry about any driver that's out in the bush. I always glad to hear that they're back out onto the road. Ten hours later, just east of Hope. Yeah, we're on the move. Yeah. Al Firing's first job of winter. Hopefully we don't get parked on the hill. <laughs> is a Goliath task. We're gonna be helping a company from Alberta haul an oversized load through the corridor. This particular piece of the gross vehicle weight is right around 480,000 uh, pounds. Going along to make sure they make it through without any fuss or ado. I'm going to disconnect my winch line underneath the side of the box and reconnect the winch line to the trailer hitch. We got work to do. Oh, yeah, right there? Yeah, go right in there. Okay. We're trying to get yeah, this up over the Coca Cola tonight. Okay. Al will support a convoy led by Tyson Friesen. Got a lot of slow movement. We're going to be stopping a lot of traffic along the highway tonight, so safety is number one. The massive team has been assembled to carry yeah, one yeah. of the largest industrial compressors over the mountain pass. The trailer is our 150 ton dual lane. We're running 18 feet wide, 15 feet high, and we're over 250 feet long. Heaviest load that has yet to cross over the Coca-Cola Highway. I'll let you pull it forward. Al will escort the convoy over the steepest part of the route. An elevation change of 4,000 feet in less than 20 miles. Tonight. Any other concerns, questions? It's good to Al will only be towing if there's a problem. For us to be able to get in case there's a failure, I can hook onto the front of that convoy and drag it up off the highway. Because if this baby's parked in the middle of Coquihalla, that whole highway is shut down. Alrighty. Let's light her up. It's just another day in BC here. The convoy, led by Al, starts the slow and steady climb. Guided by the one man who knows every hazard of the highway. We're just going to be pulling out of here, so we're going to have to stop a couple times to hook the push trucks up and stuff. Hopefully we don't get parked on the hill. Huge amount of pressure. This piece of equipment has got to be there tonight. We're moving ahead at a snail state now. So far, temperature along to make sure uh, make five degrees. The weather is holding, but any change and Al will be facing a nightmare. 
that truck out, which would break traction for half the tire rotation. There goes the rear end like that. Now we got half a million pounds stuck in the middle of the Coquihalla Highway. Temperatures are dropped. A lot of slow movement. Ready to stop a lot of traffic. Slow the highway. Going uphill. Safety coming up on the steepest part. Smells like snow. As we're going up the high mountain pass, the weather changes. Good coming. Now it's starting to snow. What if Mother Mountain is really going to fire up? That could be a real problem for us. Hopefully it's just a little squall and isn't going to uh, turn into the normal Coquihalla disaster up here. You guys getting any snow? Yes, we're getting lots of snow. On the coke. Snow now. Al Quiring is escorting a half million pound load up the mountain pass. We're gonna make the final charge up through the snow shed corridor and up over Zasha. So hopefully we can get the rest of the load any problem. As the convoy climbs closer to the summit. The weather becomes more unpredictable. Spot out sent me a 40,000 pounds is one issue. Having a 480,000 pound issue, Big Green would definitely have its work cut out for pulling it up the hill. But near the top of the mountain highway, Al and the convoy catch a break. Luckily, as we got the old troll of the mountain, didn't come back. One of them are okay. Getting through the snow shed, past the summit, means Al's job is over. They made it on their own. Mother Nature didn't cut loose with an unwanted snowstorm. on the line if that highway gets blocked. So in that we would be able to skedaddle up the hill and not have an issue. Do you guys have a good trip there? No. That's what happens on the coca -Cola. You go up there ready for the worst, nothing happens. You go up there prepared thinking oh, nothing will happen. It could be chaos, absolute chaos. The next morning, in hope. Let us go and do what we do. Do, 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 do. Colin McLean is setting out to retrieve a wreck more than 600 miles away. Me and Jim are heading off on another one of our spectacular road adventures. This winter, I expect to be doing a lot more long haul jobs. Seat down, tunes up, and, and driving all over the country. Road trips are a growing part of Jamie's strategy to stay in the game. So last year, we started to develop quite a busy, heavy duty long haul business. That's what's within the race for us. Colin's going to tow me out so we can save fuel. He has a wreck to pick up in Regina, and I have to go to North Dakota. But on this journey, I got some more underwear and socks and cash to pay for the truck. Jamie's planning to bring something back for himself. What did you buy again? The International Transfer. I like the wheel and deal. I like to buy and sell equipment. That's it. That's the last one. He always says that. The last one. The last one. Jamie loves restoring these old trucks, loves working with them. Luckily, Cherry is getting on my case. She thinks I'm nuts. It is a bit of a disease, these trucks. My ultimate goal is to have and operate a mostly paid for fleet of homes equipment accented by a few new trucks. They made it on their own. Mother you know, every now and then he talks about getting something new.
time on Highway Through Hell. Look at that. That's a heavy pull. Jamie and the General face a monster in the mud. Colin pushes his luck. In Mighty Mo. Come on. And a lost camper on a slick road. This is ridiculous. Has Team Reliable Mitch. hanging on. That's what's winning the race for us. Colin's gonna tow me out so we can save fuel. He has a wreck to pick up in Regina, and I have to go to North Dakota. I got some more underwear, socks, and cash to pay for the truck. What did you buy again? The International Transfer. I love the wheel and deal. I love to buy and sell equipment. That's it. That's the last one. He always says that. The last one. Jamie loves restoring these old trucks, loves working with them. Cherry is getting on my case. She thinks I'm nuts. It is a bit of a disease, these trucks. My ultimate goal is to have and operate a mostly paid for fleet of homes equipment accented by a few new trucks. You know, every now and then he talks about getting something new. Jamie, 